Hello everyone. Welcome to DevNet Create. Today's session is based on intent based test automation. Myself Devashish, I have co-presenter Animan Bashak with me to present you the solution called UBot. A quick intro about myself. I am Devashish Vadra, working with Cisco as a software architect. And my primary focus is towards network services automation and orchestration domain. And I'm part of CX Proactive Software Engine and takes part in multiple enablement sessions with the teams as well as new innovations. Hi, myself Anirban. I work with customer uh, uh, as a consultant and primarily work in the domain of network automation orchestration to build solution for customer business needs. I also uh, regularly take part in innovation and invention uh, around my field of work. Thank you, Vashish, back to you. All right, so today's topic is very familiar topic regarding testing, but we're gonna talk something different and try to make testing fun rather than pain. So now this is what we call as a QA word of cloud. Let's say, for example, if, if I've been asked to do some testing, no matter what software I'm testing, what platform is going under test, the first thing comes in my mind is what kind of scripting I need to do to kind of make the testing happen. And with that, so many other words will be bubbling in my mind in respect of what are the learning curves I need to go through to understand that specific scripting language or platform or framework. And with that, how much time I need to spend to write those test scripts and how do I even make sure what is the quality of the test scripts that I am building and how those test scripts can even cater to entire test coverage and so many things, right? This is not just all. There could be many other words that can come in mind while testing is a major concern because that is where the quality of the product is being designed. Now the solution Qbot comes with multiple features in respect of test automation. And first of all, let's talk about the model driven service payload generation. So normally for any of the systems, which is adding to a model or a young model, rather to be very specific, the u has capability to dig down to that environment and get the entire schema of that model and can automatically generate and build the payloads, which is what will be required to kind of test that particular platform. So that's something was initially manual or currently manual. If we do not know, we have to do it manually, but with you what we can simply point that to that platform and we can get that automatically fetched and generated by you bot itself. The second one is even more interesting. So we talk about power of intent. Yes. So today world is based on first changing world where on every single delivery or projects goes under a tremendous pressure of delivery. And there's a concept of sprints, which comes from the agile delivery life cycle. Now for that purpose, we are no more having enough time to build or write test cases manually. So rather we need something which can understand your intent of testing and it can convert your intent to a nice test workflow, which is even more standardized. And with that, this particular solution is supporting many more protocols like RESTConf, REST, HTTP, SSH, and so on and so forth. That means you can easily understand what are the capability it brings in so that you can reach out to any of the, 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 the northbound or southbound communications from UBOT and you can interact and write the test cases. Rather, I would say generate the test cases. Talking about the test execution, yes, every single test automation platform should have a powerful test engine. We do also have the same. And for this purpose, this test engine is having a bit of difference because here you have workflow controls. That means whenever you build a test workflow, you just simply not run the workflow, but you have a complete control on your workflow that which phase of the workflow should run, which one should not run. You can have everything controlled by yourself. And definitely it produces a very, very extensive reporting, considering every single details that has been gone through during test execution, you get to see all of those information in the report. And along with that, if you are managing the entire end-to-end -end QA lifecycle, that means you have some test manager in place, 
definitely we need to provide integration with your test manager as well to have the complete test traceability. If I talk about the agility, yes, so every single sprint is very crucial and we need to evolve or even try to evolve in respect of sprint velocity. So this is where you what comes handy. And if we adapt you what in proper time and phases, we can definitely increase the sprint velocity. Uh, regarding the solution portability, yes, it is a containerized solution. So it can be ported or deployed virtually everywhere. That means you can use the solutions in your local laptop, desktop, any of the servers or test environments, including CI CD pipeline. And it also exposes API so that you, if you're having third party application that needs to talk to you what to produce the test workflow and to execute it. Yes, you are happy to do that because it exposes Swagger REST APIs as well as CLI APIs for easy integration. And with all of these features in place, what we are claiming is, is a complete no code approach solution. That means to write the test cases, you are not writing it manually, rather you are producing your intent and you are if you got the test work for generated automatically by you bot, where you can save a lot of time and effort. So this is a bit quick zoom in to the system and the capabilities. So we talked about multiple protocols and we can see in this slide that what are the protocols and the methods that is being supported by you bot. So talking about rest cons or rest or even generic HTTP protocols. So we support all the available methods in there. And it has got some native capability for specific platforms where you can do some capabilities like load much config terminals, capture config and those things if you are working with the network devices. It has got a validation and assertion libraries where you can use those to validate your workflow runtime. Some utility operations like sleep and replace. Those also comes handy and out of, out of the box so that you can even use them in your workflow to make it much more richer and much more flexible and having more controls. It also supports runtime variables. That means you can parse your response or you can parse any output from the previous steps and you can make use of that in a variable and then you can use the variable in your first subsequent steps. And definitely last but not the least, it supports direct communications with your network devices through SSCLI. With that, I would like to hand it over to Anirban for a quick demo. Thank you, Devashish. Before we move into a demo, let's uh, let's look into a practical use case uh, that we want to test, or we want to see how the testing can be built uh, for this particular use case. Now uh, uh, we are we are picking up a very simple use case. It's a it's a it's a network controller who wants to configure an interface on a device. However, before configuring the interface on the device, it wants to acquire that IP address for that interface from an external item system. And now before it can actually acquire the IP address from the external item system, it needs to log in, get the token, open a session, and then it can uh, get the uh, IP address from that IPAM, which then needs to be used by the network controller to provision on the device. And then after that, the use case is basically to validate whether the interface configuration is success or not, whether the configuration itself is as expected or not, whether the interface is really up and routable or not. Now, when we say that, it means it's an uh, pretty much end-to-end -end test workflow that we want to define. Now, if we just go over uh, the, the steps that would be required to build this kind of test workflow, uh, we see that first a login to IPAM needs to happen. And from there, the token needs to be fetched or uh, parsed, in other words. And once the token is fetched, then the same token needs to be used to establish a session with IPAM and then uh, call an IPAM API, depending on which IPAM is being used, uh, it needs to allocate IP address from a certain subnet. And then finally, it needs to provision the interface on the network device or network equipment, in other words, via a network controller. 
which provisions the interface and after that first of all we want to validate whether the configuration or generated configuration is as expected in the controller itself that is step one of validation next step of validation we want to validate whether the device configuration is as expected or not and so on whether the interface is actually up or not and once we verify all uh, this after that we want to pause a little while maybe a 10 seconds to allow the traffic to start flowing maybe and then we want to do a quick reachability check whether that interface is really accessible uh, you know within that subnet or not and then once all the tests are done whether passed or failed we want to uh, clean up the setup so that uh, there is no residue uh, we want to clean up the network controller service first and then we also want to deallocate or release the ip which was um, allocated from ipam now this is more of the process or the steps or the method that are required to satisfy this kind of end-to-end -end test for this particular use case now let's little bit of talk about how can we build such workflow test workflow in our intent based screen or our intent based uh, test workflow uh, definition tool or platform where it is also a zero code approach or no code approach that means that we want to build this entire test workflow without writing a single line of code now that's where ubot comes into the picture uh, that's where ubot is built and uh, okay first of all we have a lot more other features too in ubot but we are talking about intent based test automation today so let's focus on that um, we i have already created one workflow which satisfies the test workflow that uh, we have been seeing on the on the diagram or on the flow diagram let's uh, for today we are focusing on the intent based uh, test definition on ubot and uh, that is one of the major feature of ubot where we are we are talking about defining end to end test validation or test workflow without writing any code now uh, we, i have already uh, loaded one one test workflow for today's presentation and this test workflow is for the test end to end test validation uh, scenario or use case that we just have seen now if we recollect for that test validation or test uh, workflow for that particular use case first we need to connect to ipan and get the or uh, well log into the ipan and uh, get the token for that ipan which can be used further uh, for further ipan integration or communications now here if we see i have mentioned an operation post that means i want to make an post call to ipan and i want to send that post to this api path or this url which is api v2 get token and that post call will go to ipan system now what is this ipan system this is basically an id of the server or the host where this request will go into and uh, uh, if we see execution later i'm not sure if we have that much bandwidth today but uh, when we do the execution of this test workflow on ubot that time we basically define what are the ip address and access credential etc for that particular server now let's move on we connected to or we logged into uh, we logged into ipam and after that we basically need to parse the token from the output so here we are we are parsing the output 
parsing the output that we received from IPAM to capture the token and storing it in a variable called IPAM token. And after that, we are using that particular token to further connect to IPAM and open a session. Once we have the session opened from the response, again, we uh, parse, the, parse the token. Uh, well, it's a session, not the token, but it's a session. We parse the session number. And then we call the API to allocate IP address with both token and the session information, which we already have retrieved in previous steps. And then after that, there is a very specific controller, uh, platform specific operation that I'm doing that is basically telling uh, you what to capture the configuration of the test device on the controller. And here we are talking about NSO as a network controller. After that, we are doing a post to the controller with a service payload to create the service. Or in other words, we are telling controller, network controller to configure the service on the device and send it to the device. So that device is having that configuration. And after that step, we are capturing the latest configuration from the controller once again. And then we are doing a special operation over here which is basically validating the device configuration, which has been generated by that network service on the controller. And here we can actually verify whether the generated configuration on the controller are as expected or not. So this is one part of the validation, but that's not all. That is just one part of the validation. That is just the generated configuration is as expected or not. After that, we want to run a show interface description command on the router to, to validate on the next step whether the, whether the output of the show, uh, show interface command is showing that interface as up, up. That means admin up, operational up. If not, that means if it is, then that means that interface is configured correctly. If not, that means it's uh, not configured correctly. So that is second validation. Not only that, after that, we can sleep for or wait for certain amount of time, and then we can do a ping check to ensure that the interface, what we configured, indeed has a reachability to its subnet or not. And once uh, all these uh, uh, validation are done, we are doing a cleanup, that means we are removing the service we are removing the configuration that way from the device as well and then we are also deallocating the ip from uh, from from item system and when we execute uh, for the sake of time i already have executed and stored the uh, one of the report here now if we see the report of the test execution we can see that each and every step what we defined in the workflow are represented in the HTML in a in a step by step or a tree format, where we can see which step it is, how long it took, whether it's a pass or failure, if there is any uh, configuration related uh, uh, you know operation involved in there, that is also displayed. The whole configuration is also you know captured on the report so that it can be verified or captured or stored as well as per needs. And uh, yeah, so that's and, and not only that, uh, if there is any difference between expected result versus the actual result that can that will also be shown in a nice uh, on screen diff as well. So it's a, it's a real time diff uh, that we can see here. As well. So yes, um, I think I have covered um, the most important parts. We have seen how we can define the test case without writing any code behind it. It's all about defining the intents. It's all about understanding of the platform that we want to test and define the intents according to the platform and the use case that we want to test. So yeah, uh, with this, I'll hand over, uh, hand it back to Devashish. Devashish. Back to you. 
Yeah, thank you, Anirban. It was a nice demo. Um, so quick recap. So we just saw a quick demo. I know it's not in-depth demo. Uh, short of time, we could not end up demo, but yeah, we have seen the entire process being explained in this slide how we can do end to end demo, keeping in mind my northbound, my southbound, and even to my extreme southbound towards the network devices, and we can build everything in a single workflow. And these workflows are so dynamic and so flexible that it's completely dependent on your use case, how you want to build it, and that's all. Um, continuing that part, would like to also mention that we have shown the demo for the, the U-Bot test automation in respect of test case creation and test execution and reporting. But that's not all. It comes with many more cool features, which is what uh, it can also do. But the key te takeaways for today's session would be this is a solution not only for a specific group of people, right? It is a complete solution which can be used and leveraged by a development team, a QA team, project management team, and even the customer. So development team, they are now having a flexibility to do kind of on-demand testing. Whenever there is a small change they make, they do not have to write any script. They can simply go and update the workflow and they can quickly run it to get the results and get back to their code. QA team is definitely, there's no learning curve, by the way. Because it's a complete no code approach to generate the test workflow and to also execute it. That means QA is no more need to learn a new technology, new platform, rather, depending on uh, the test cases that they want to build, they can simply go to this intent based automation UI and they can express the intent by selecting and doing some few clicks and it generates the workflow automatically. Project team wise, definitely we talk about the cost saving and increased ROI because you are spending less time for entire end to end test automation lifecycle. From customer perspective, we can talk about the test case validation. It's a very good and important factor because if we write some scripting for test automation, customer is not in a position to understand that and they are not having time to read through your code base to understand the workflow or the language. Rather, in this case, it's a visual display, which is what you can see and get to know what exactly is happening in every single step and in what sequence. With that, I would like to conclude and say, we have seen a short demo again, but if you are interested to see more and talk to us, please reach out to uwattechteam at cisco.com. With that, thanks for joining us for the demo and the short session, and have a nice day. Bye-bye.